Well, good evening, Heritage. Can we stand together in this place tonight? I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited. I love these encounter nights as we, as we have extended worship. Feel free to worship as you, as you would. I want to start with the scripture. It says, but the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon, for they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. They flourish in the courts of our God. That's from Psalm 92. And from Psalm 122, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Come on now. Sing it out now. We were the beggars, but now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Sing it out now. We were the beggars.
Come on, let's give God praise. Father, we give you praise tonight. God, we lift your name on high. God, you said if you be lifted up, you'll draw all men to you. God, so tonight, God, it's about you make, you becoming famous in our lives. God, you uh, being famous in our area, our community. God, our marriages. God, in our families. And Father, we, we want to draw attention to you tonight. Uh, we don't want to draw attention to ourselves. God, we want to make you larger in this place. And Father, I just pray, God, that, that as we start out our night tonight, Father, that you would just do that. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Uh, let me share just a little bit. Uh, give your neighbor a high five. Would you do that? Woo! Say welcome tonight. Yeah. Oh. So a uh, little bit kind of uh, some, some house cleaning uh, things tonight that I want to share. Uh, first of all, we're so glad uh, that our kids are in the environment tonight. And, and so isn't that awesome? Isn't it good that they're here? It's a big deal. And uh, we're glad that they're here. And, uh, and we do that uh, on our, our encounter nights uh, uh, by intentionality because we believe that your kids should see you worship, right? And, and, uh, and they should see you worshiping at home and they should see you worshiping in church. And, and uh, so I say all that to say if there's a kid picking his nose up here, um, just close your eyes. It's amazing what kind of distractions go away if you close your eyes. Some people are like, uh, did you see so-and-so? And I'm like, no, because I'm worshiping. See, you'll either worship or you'll be skeptical of those who do. So if you're seeing something you don't like, you know what's interesting? Just close your eyes. So simple, right? It's easy. It's amazing what you can get rid of if you close your eyes. Just saying, that's just, it's just the truth. And, and, and I want to just uh, real quick... Um, just mention this, that our passion for these evenings, um, and we're going to do that, do another one, and um, is, is to what I would call, I was thinking about it, how to describe it today. In our church, uh, first of all, it's not, it's not Sunday morning, and it's not a, a traditional Wednesday night. So what that means is uh, we design these night as a Petri dish for the spirit-filled life. And, and, and so what I mean by that is, is we have so many people in our church coming from different faiths, Lutheran and Baptist, and that's wonderful. But one thing that God has called me to be as a minister to not just uh, our, our fellowship, but more than that. And, and I believe that God has birthed inside your pastor, me, to figure out how to begin to bring you forward in not what is denominational, but what is biblical. And, and so there are things that we believe... Uh, as a church, that I, I don't care what it says uh, with the denomination. I'm, I'm concerned with what it says about the Bible. And, and so we believe that you raise your hands. There's expressions of worship. And so uh, Sunday and Sunday mornings and, and our traditional every week Wednesday gatherings is, is not always the space that you can always petri dish those sort of things. Uh, and so what we designed to do is to petri dish, uh, so there's teaching and prayer on some of those, what I would call 301 and 401 type subjects that are super important to the, to the, to the work of Christ in this church. And, and so, so first of all, I want to say this on the top. Number one, um, you know, we got kids here, and that's by design. Number two is, is that this is a petri dish for Pentecost. And, 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 if that, and that word, and I could, I could preach, I don't mean to take all the time, Pastor Abby, but Petri dish is so, uh, or Petri dish, Pentecost is such a loaded word. And uh, there's so many misnomers about what, it just means 50. That's what it means. But 50 days after Christ, uh, God did something tremendous and the church is born. In fact, uh, I'm so excited. We're starting, uh, we're going through Acts this year in, two, in a week from Sunday. I'm going to start Acts chapter 1 and I'm jacked about it. And, and, and so many cool things that God's revealing to me that I'm excited about you. And I believe that God's going to take your life to the next level. And so we believe, in, and I'm saying, God, here's the deal. I, I, I don't care, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily care, God, about um, my, my faith heritage that I'm thankful for. But, Lord, I want to I know what you are saying to me through your word. That, that, that your word is more important. Does that make sense tonight? And so we want to give direction to that. So the other part of that is, is that if, if God, these are evenings are designed 
that if and, and I want to be very careful with this because as maybe God um, would speak to you tonight for the body, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. If that's the case, um, you can you can submit that. Come over here and say, I feel like God's uh, going to say something, wants to say something through the body, and I'll vet that. As the pastor, that's that's what I do. That's why God put me here, is to vet those sort of things. And if and if I feel like that we that that's in the vein of where God is going, like. Uh, we're not going to talk about donuts if God's doing Twinkies tonight. You know, sometimes people will say, well, God's speaking. I'm like, dude, that is so, that, that is from, that, that's, that's not where, where we're at tonight. And so that's the importance of that. And the Bible says, know those who labor among you, first of all. Do things in, in order. That's what God says. And, and so, so that's why we do that. But, but we want to see God be everything that he wants to be in this place. Does that make sense? I've talked enough. We're going to worship. So, so, uh, and, and the thing is, and I want to say this, sometimes God is speaking to us individually, and we think that that's for the corporate body. You see what I'm saying? And sometimes it's not. You know, God's talking to us about healing, and, and just because God's talking to you doesn't, need to, doesn't mean it's for everyone. See what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Uh, but, but I'm brave enough to say, God, we want everything that you have for us, right? Everything that he has. Let me check my list real quick. Pastor Abby's going to boot me off the platform. I've already taken three minutes, four minutes. Um, So here's the function of encounter, more of his presence in our lives. More of his presence in our lives. I'm going to come back in a little bit, and I'm going to talk about healing because that's one powerful thing that God still does. He still does. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. We're going to believe God's going to heal people. And, uh, you know, and and the thing is, is decently and in order is the way we're going to do things. But my prayer is that regardless of the, the, of the fellowship, regardless of where you've grown up, regardless of your faith walk, I believe that God is beckoning you to know more of him. And so we want to give, we want to give some, some road to that. And, and, and I love that, that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. What if he does something I don't want to do? He's not. He's a gentleman. He moves into a surrendered life, a willing life, a hungry life. And so that's the way we want to be today. So would you lift your hands across this place? That's a biblical expression, not, not, not a denominational expression, by, by the way. Is it means this. This is what raising your hands means. Is it means surrender. The other, like if somebody put a, a gun to your back, you would stick your hands up and say, I don't have anything on me. It's a posture of surrender. The second thing is, is I like it, look at it like, come on, daddy, pick me up. Come on, would you do something in my life tonight? Would you speak to me? Because listen, there's some of you in this room that you're having broken marriages and you're struggling with depression and what you need is a touch from God. That's what you need tonight. And listen, everything else you've read about, everything else you, that you, you have looked at, but, but let me tell you something. God can do in one moment what it takes a counselor a lifetime to do. And so some of you are on the brink of disaster if God doesn't show up in your life. So tonight, that's what we're reaching out. God, would you show up in our lives tonight? God, because there's some serious people here. And God, we want to do everything that you want, God, that we submit ourselves to you. And God, we want to know everything that you have. And God, we're so thankful for where you've brought us, the church, the fellowship. But God, we don't want to just rest out of our tradition. We want to rest in what your word says. We don't want to be limited based upon uh, what we have known. We want to be called to a different place because of what your scripture says. So sometimes, God, that, that you call us out of comfort. God, I, I know that the moments of my life when I've grown the most is when you've taken away my comfort. And God, I've stepped out onto the water to follow you. And so I pray that tonight we would step out of the boat and follow you and see you like we've never seen you before. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. We're going to get to it in a second, I promise. Who's ready to get to it? But I just want to encourage you with one more thing and let you know that tonight on our Heritage app, we have links to all the songs we're seeing tonight, plus the scriptures that we have prayed over and chosen to read with the songs. We're doing that intentionally tonight to model to you, to show you that the word of God, scripture, the Bible is so closely tied to worship tonight. Um, The word worship in the old English is actually worth-ship. 
And it means to give something worth, to demonstratively attribute value to something. So tonight, that's what we want to do, right? We want to attribute value to God. But here's the question. How do you do that when you don't know that person? Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you an example here. I know Mike. Hi, Mike. I spent time with Mike. I've listened to his stories, his testimony. I've observed him and how he treats people, his behaviors. And so I can look at him and I, I can honor him. And I can ascribe value to him and I can say, you're a good man, Mike. You have a kind heart, you have a gentle spirit. You're such a good shepherd, you love people so well. Because I know him. Okay, it's the same with God tonight. There's this quote I loved, I read today, it says, our worship can only duly honor God if it accurately reflects what he reveals about himself in the word. So tonight we're reading scriptures because we want you to know it's not just some song that somebody came up with. The songs we sing are the truths of God in scripture. I don't choose songs that aren't. (laughs) Because as your pastor, I want you to be singing truth over your life and truth over your family. So get on that app. You know, after tonight, use it all throughout the week and the weekend and just continue to let God reveal himself to you. You know, we have a goal for this year to everybody, a thousand people, more, hopefully, to read the New Testament. Why are we doing that? Because we want you to see truth. John 4, 24 says he wants worshipers that worship in spirit and truth. How do you do that? You get in the word and you know who God is and you know the truth. The Bible is, is, is called a light unto my path. It's called the sword of the spirit that pierces the darkness, that pierces lies. It's called a looking glass, a purifying fire, a seed that produces fruit, food that sustains me, gold, something so valuable. It's all those things. It's powerful. And when we combine it with worship and we sing these truths and we sing what we know about God, things happen. And that's what we're expecting tonight, right? That's what we're expecting. But I just want you to see the connection of what we're singing. It's it's scripture tonight. And the worshipers often in the Bible, they went first in battle. Did you know that? And so when we're combining this truth and we've got our weapon of truth tonight and singing, we are leading in battle. So come on, guys, let's sing. Let's do it. So Psalm 24, seven says, lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is he, this king of glory? The Lord almighty, he is the king of glory. So we're gonna declare that, we're gonna sing it to the King of Glory today. Come on, let's sing. There is singing at the ancient gates. There's a melody of ceaseless praise. Age to age, the sound is only growing stronger.
Revelation chapter 1 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Now we're going to declare that in this place, the beginning and the end, who was and who is to come. Come on. The one who was, the one who is, the one who We're going to read Luke 19. Go ahead and put that up there. It says, when he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. But soon the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he said to them, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. I don't want the stones to cry out for me tonight. What about you? Come on, do we understand this? Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Yeah, the second one. Let's read it again. There we go. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. They were praising God loudly. And he said, Rebuke them, stop them, shut them up, basically. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. He's saying, Nature wants to worship me, so I need you to worship me. I don't want a stone to cry out in my place, so we're going to worship him loudly. We're going to worship him with joy, just like the disciples did. Who's with me? Woo! We're going to worship you tonight, Jesus. Who else would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to shine perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing but this joy is mine aren't you thankful tonight with a thousand hallelujahs we magnify your name you alone deserve the glory the honor and the praise, Lord Jesus, 
tonight well tonight we just want to give opportunity we know like pastor he said there's needs in this room tonight there's people on the edge feeling unshaken and just need a touch from God and so I want to invite the prayer teams to come forward if that's you tonight get to these altars these people are ready to pray for you to be a support to you tonight. We're gonna keep singing. We're gonna keep speaking truths of scripture tonight. But if you have a need, come on up. And the next song we're gonna sing is one of the team's favorites, I'd say. And we're gonna read Proverbs 3. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart 
and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. We're gonna sing th things that say like, um, here's where I lay it down, God. Here's where I surrender. Here's where I give up my understanding of this situation. And I'm gonna make room for you to speak your truth, to speak your ways. It's not gonna be about my ways. And that's what this scripture, the heart of the scripture is about. So let's just submit, surrender, and song to him tonight. God, we just want to come to you. God, we want a heart that says, we trust you, Jesus. We're, we're, we're looking to your ways tonight, God. We want to surrender. We want to submit. We want to lay it down, God. The lies, the doubts. God, we're done. God, we want to chase after you tonight.
When I lean on you, when I lean on your ways, God, it's so much better. just be interceding for those that have needs tonight that are praying that are trying to lay it down and surrender submit to God let's intercede for them as well his presence just wash over you tonight sometimes when we take a minute just pause and and literally just breathe in we realize that we've been striving we've been pushing we've been so busy that we've gotten ourselves so wound up that God's presence is just we forgot what it felt like a little bit sometimes we just need to take a breath Breathe in his goodness. Let it wash over you. Let it wash away the worries, fears, the anxieties, the depression. In Jesus' name, let his presence wash it all. Take a breath.
breaks the bondage tonight He sets the captive free Yes, he does Yes, he does It's who he is That's who he is It's his character tonight He loves you, he sees you If you're bound tonight, he, he longs to set you free He's a really good dad.
Come on, give him praise. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God, of our worship. Father, you're worthy. Come on, let's make it a sacrifice tonight. Come on, you're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. We thank you for your goodness in this place. Hey, just real quick, I want to read. Um, uh, just a, probably a few days ago, I felt led to, to share this. Um, something that never happened in the Word before that, uh, that, that I think it's interesting. Nowhere else in Scripture do you find it. It's, it's in Mark uh, chapter 8, verse 22, and it says, And, and they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought to him, speaking of Jesus, a blind man, and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, uh, we're going to spit on some eyes tonight. So if you need, so <clears throat> just kidding, maybe. Uh, and laid hands on him. And look at this. He asked him, do you see anything? I love that. Uh, do you see anything? Is what we're doing working? Is there anything that you're noticing different? And I like this. And he looked up and he said, I see people. He was blind. But he said, I see people. They look like trees walking. And then look at this. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again. I like that. And he opened his eyes and his, his sight was restored. And he saw everything clearly. Hey, hey real quick. Uh, the same Jesus that was here is the same Jesus that's here. In fact, uh, Hebrews 13.8 says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, and I have a big problem with telling a God who is bigger than me that what he can and cannot do. He can do anything he wants to do. And he doesn't care who tells him he can't. He's going to do what he wants. Because that's the prerogative you have when you're superior. It's the prerogative you have when you run the universe all by yourself. So I want to tell you this, he's, he's the same. Uh, the second thing I want to share tonight, because I do believe that he still heals. I'll never forget when my grandpa, as a little boy, told me a moment, a lady just attended his church and had a big old nasty tumor. I mean like a grapefruit-sized tumor on her neck. And, and he told me as his little grandson, he says, Heath, I'll never forget as I put my hand on her head. Nothing special. No spiritual gymnastics. Just very simple. Prayed a prayer. And the tumor dropped on the floor. And, and it was like it had never been there. And, and, and I want you to know, um, I'm not interested in serving a God who is limited. The reason he is Jehovah, the reason he is who he is, is because he can do things like that. And, and to limit him to my, my humanity is a sin. Because he's bigger than that. And he's the God that deserves our our praise deserves our surrender, deserves our mind space to believe that he can do those things. I'm not telling you, my grandpa would never, how many, how many grandpas out there? How many grandpas would, te, would, would tell your grandkid a lie? My grandpa saw it with his eyes. He'd never tell me a lie. There's no scientific reason that in that moment, in that day, that that lady attended his church with that ugly tumor her whole life and, and he prays in that moment and it literally drops on the ground. Here's the second thing I want to say just real quick as we pray. We're going to pray for healing. Is sometimes you got to go twice. Sometimes you, you have to. Some of you already came and you prayed for healing. I'm going to ask you tonight to come twice and get prayed for. And I think it's important that we ask, hey, how do you feel? I'm praying. And, and, and here's the deal. I think sometimes in church, we try to explain all the reasons why God sometimes doesn't heal and, and omit the, the belief and the idea that he still does heal. And so, you know, I, I have found myself as pastoring, try to, try, trying and spending more time to try to explain the fact of why God didn't heal you instead of encouraging you to come back twice. And so I... 
he, he's the big G-O-D. That's what he does. So we're going to pray for healing. And uh, I'm going to ask you to come in a few moments. In fact, I'm going to ask you if you need healing right now to come now and find one of these prayers. Let's, I'm going to pray for you. Come on. Uh, just come now. I have mental. I'm talking about depression. I'm talking about anxiety. I'm talking about um, physical healing. Listen, he is not a God that just limits healing physically. Because I, I think the biggest epidemic in our world is no longer physical issues, but mental issues. And, and depression and anxiety, suicidal thoughts. And just as God needs to heal the body, he needs to heal the mind. And so I want you, if you would, uh, uh, to make sure that somebody's prayed for. I, I know um, uh, I need some of you, big, big uh, Lowell and, and Doug. And to, who's, who's all here for healing, to, to pray for healing? Who's all here? I want to see your hand. So we got to make sure that, uh, so here's Emma, Pastor Emma. So come on and find somebody. Joe is here. We need to make sure there's some prayer people. So uh, Amy, are you here? Or are you going to pray? You're here for healing. We're, amen. For, for Yes. So, you know, cr- incredible story. Uh, Amy is my, my daughter's mother-in-law. We're family. Uh, you want to talk about healing her son years ago. God healed, his, healed her son. So we know about healing. And uh, we believe in healing. And we're believing God for this little girl tonight. So, and that God would do it. And, and, and the thing is, is we're going to ask. That's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to ask tonight. Okay? That, that's what we're doing. And, 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 and I'm going to believe tonight that God's going to heal people tonight. Okay? And, and, and I'm, I'm not going to work on explaining sometimes that, that in his providence, sometimes he, ch- he chooses to wait or he, he chooses to go another route. But we're going to believe tonight that God's going to heal people. Okay? So I want you to begin to pray. And if you haven't been prayed for, I want you to get some prayer from these guys. Okay? Let's just pray. And then we're going to worship. I'm going to pray for everybody in this room. If you're, I want, I want to pray for you. And I want these guys to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you twice. Okay? Uh, we're going to go twice. Okay? So uh, if you need healing tonight, I want you to lift your hands, and I want you to believe God. I mean, it's just over and over in the Bible, the same Jesus that healed the man can heal you because he's the same. And the thing is, sometimes once God may heal you, but sometimes you got to pray twice. So God, tonight, we declare your presence in this place. God, we act as a little child, and we believe that you can just do it. And so, God, right now, we are asking you to do something incredible. And, God, we'll be quick to give you glory. We'll be quick. I'm not interested in, in putting uh, and selling it and, and doing a ministry, a healing ministry. God, we're not interested in profiting from this. And, and God, we just simply want to see you work. We simply want to see you glorify yourself. God, we simply want to see you show off your power. And so, God, tonight, would you do that? Would you just heal somebody? God, even somebody in this seat. God, that's doubting. God, that's that's so discouraged. That's prayed for depression over and over again. God, even right now that you would do it. That you would, God, that they've been back so many times. God, that you would do it. You said in your word, by your stripes, we're healed. And God, we continue to ask. God, our job is to ask. Our job is to believe. Our job is to pray. God, your job is to do what you do. It's to bring the miracle. It's to bring the healing. And so, God, tonight we ask. God, you said that, God, you you love us and you care about us. That if we ask for a, a fish, would you give us a stone? And God, tonight we're asking. God, as your children, as your kids, we're asking. And God, we believe that you're better to your kids than the enemy is to his kids. And so, God, tonight, take care of your kids. God, you're a good God. Father, you brood over your people as a chicken does his chicks. You you carry them under your wing. And so, Father, would you do that tonight? God, would you surprise somebody tonight? God, would you just touch a body tonight? And God, I call out. We call these people out. God, and we believe. God, we believe. We trust in you. You're a good God. Would you do the impossible tonight? God, you said in your word that that's what you do. And so, Father, we thank you that you still heal. And we give you praise. Glorify yourself tonight. We're coming twice, maybe three times that you heal in Jesus' name.
Pentecost, all believers were meeting together in one place, kind of like tonight. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages the Holy Spirit gave this some ability. The prophet Joel says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants. Men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become, will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And Jesus, we call upon your name tonight, God, the God who can do it again, who can bring a healing, God, just a touch from your spirit, God. Would you pour it out afresh tonight, God? Would you pour it out, Lord? Prophesy and sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing, blowing. Move upon our praise. Sons and daughters sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing.
Thank you, God, that you're always faithful to show up. God, that you're always here. God, and you make us aware of your presence tonight, God. In your presence, we found healing tonight. In your presence tonight, we found peace. You're so faithful to come through in that way, God. And we, we give you thanks tonight. Right, church? We give them thanks. 
so faithful. Every time, every time. Psalm 27, we're going to read that tonight. It says, teach me your ways, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Have you ever felt like stuff was just pressing down on you? Anybody? It says, do not turn me over to the desires of my foes or my enemy, but for false witnesses, they rise up against me. They are uh, spouting malicious accusations. That's what the enemy does, right? But here it is. I remain confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That just means right now in the present. Wait for the Lord tonight. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord because he is faithful to show up. Let's sing of his goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Love you tonight. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay. Of the goodness of God. Come on. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend.
Sing it. Surrender can be hard, but when you really can grasp the goodness, the goodness of God, isn't it a little easier? A little easier tonight to surrender to a God that we just, his character, who he is, is good, trustworthy. Hmm. So we just sit and surrender tonight. with that truth before us that all my life, God, you've been faithful and your goodness is still, it's, it's running after me. I will remain confident in, in this. I will remain confident in the goodness of God in the land of the living tonight and I'll surrender to it. Amen, church. Yeah. Pastor Heath, do you have anything else tonight? We're going to we're going to sing one more song, but do you have any <laughs> Of course he does. What am I saying? Well, oh, I just want to say I'm so proud of you guys. I've been watching and uh, God, God I just feel like God looks down in this place and he said that's my kids in whom I'm well pleased giving him the best, not a three-legged lamb, not a half-baked sacrifice, but full-on worship like he's worthy of. Proud of you tonight. Let's do this for him tonight. One more for him tonight. Come on, let's.
I've got peace that makes no sense Cause I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I've built my life on Jesus Oh, he's never let me down Faithful in every season Oh, so I Matthew chapter 7 and this is the heart of tonight why we had all these scriptures because we need to get these down in our spirit we need to get these into our heart the words of Jesus he says anyone who hears and obey these teachings of mine is like a wise person who built a house on solid rock the rain poured down the rivers flooded and winds beat against that house but it was built on solid rock and so it did not fall and that's something that you can take to the bank. If you build your house upon the rock of Jesus Christ, you will never fail. He won't let it happen. He's faithful. He's been faithful, and he'll remain faithful. Amen? Let's continue to sing out to the king. You faithful God. Oh, we Okay. 
Good night, everybody. We love you guys.